Okay, so hello, and I guess welcome to my first time lapse with a commentary over it. So in this video, I'll be explaining what I did to create this final model, and just telling you what I was actually thinking while working. So let's go. So I started off by drawing a bunch of rough bow ideas on a piece of paper, and then I put them all into Photoshop, and then I used the polygonal lasso select tool and. Uh, created these silhouettes I picked the ones that I liked the most and just deleted the rest after that I picked my favorite one which I thought had the most interesting silhouette and lastly I just quickly painted in some details into the silhouette that I had picked I didn't really have to do all of this you don't have to do all of this, but I think it really helps if you want to make a weapon with a stronger and more interesting design. So starting the modeling, I put the background image so it's easier. I'm mirroring the bow on the z-axis. And I'm starting off by modeling just the shapes that are easiest that I just have to like follow the concept here I'm making a hole for the ring I decided to do these two pieces separately so that it would just be easier I didn't have to connect anything and I'm doing the straps they were a pretty big piece, pretty big and important thing in the design, so I wanted to model them separately so that they would look, so that the silhouette would be better. This area kind of gave me a bit of trouble. I was trying to see if I could save some triangles, but I couldn't. And I'm doing the string, it's just a triangle and I have one loop in the middle so that you can actually draw the bow. Doing the rings, they're pretty low poly. Now moving on to the metal piece. Just following the concept. And the time lapse is pretty quick. I didn't think that it would be this fast when I was rendering it. Adding some uh, those uh, sharp edges so that I can better feel the model. For the back piece, I just took the front part and duplicated it and scaled it down. And I wanted to, to do something so that the metal piece isn't just stuck to the wood I did these metal rings I just need the silhouette here so that it's a bit more interesting and this area I didn't really know what to do with the bone piece so I just extruded it into the, the big metal piece and I'm separated, I separated all the pieces and I'll be importing them all separately into ZBrush
just time mushed it so that I have enough topology to freely sculpt. And I'm mostly just adding just a bit of more texture and some details. Nothing much, honestly. Here I'm adding some, I'm using a brush by Orb and uh, it's just to get some uh, more variations in texture as well. And I added that line which I I didn't, I shouldn't have put it in. It doesn't really make sense but I left it in there. Doing the wood also just doing some I'm using the clay builder brush with no texture and then using the trim dynamic to get the sort of wooden feel. Here I'm trying to get this kind of... to make it look like it was cut with... Uh, it was sharpened with a knife. So I was using trim dynamic and the uh, and, uh, clay build up as well. Doing the wrappings here, just masked mask them on the wood and then extruded it. Just adding some lines, then smoothing it all out, and then using the clay buildup to add some volume. Same thing on this piece, like on the bigger wood wooden piece, just using clay build up. Just mostly using the orb cracks brush. You can you can also use it, uh, the damp standard, but I like how the orb crack brush feels more. Now I'm doing the wrappings. Just added more topology and smoothed it, smoothed it out. Adding some small details. Push this area in so it actually looked like the bone piece was put into something and I just stuck to it. I'm using the orb rock detail brush to just add some variance all over the wooden parts. Here, yeah, because it wasn't a uh, it was only in the back. I just uh, I just added a line to show that it's the the two metal pieces separate. I didn't actually extrude it into it. Doing the metal rings just added more topology and just trying to make them look more round and smooth. And the bowstring has to connect somehow, so I just 
sculpted this in. I'm doing a bit more polishing on the wood. I think I was using the H polish to get some nice uh, planes. Adding some of these marks to also just more details make it look nicer, more interesting. Adding some chips to those corners and edges using the, the brush by orb again to add some detail and variants. variants. I don't know how it's pronounced. Um, I'm adding some color straight into ZBrush. It was just so I can, so I know how I want to do the colors, like the base colors, nothing too detailed. And I was masking by cavity to get to mask all the, the cavity and then just paint it with a darker color. So we can just some more color variation. I kind of knew how I would want to do how I want to do the colors before actually starting to record everything, but I still wanted to try and use those colors in ZBrush to see if it actually works. And I think it did. So back into the blender, I'm going to do the unwrapping now. I deleted it, like, I only left one fourth of the model. And uh, I'm just going to unwrap that part and then uh, just to duplicate it, duplicate the uh, position the other parts so that I don't have to unwrap everything individually. I'm scaling the UVs, trying to make them more squarish. I didn't want to align the UVs uh, instantly because, uh, I don't know, I was just kind of scared to... I didn't want them to deform, like stretch really badly, so I was slowly just selecting vertices, scaling them on an X or Y axis by hand, just little by little. And then when I was feeling like it's all good, I just align them so they are actually straight. And I'm using I pack that to actually pack all of the UV elements together. It's much faster and easier than doing it by hand. Here you can see how I just duplicated the parts of the model 
scale them on the, the Z or the Y on the X or Z axis and just remove doubles and the, it becomes one mesh. And I skipped the baking part because it was just a lot of going back and forth between a bunch of programs and quite a bit of experimenting. You can see all of the, the maps that I baked, but the most important ones were the occlusion, cavity, normal map and uh, I did uh, I baked a bent normal map and then you just delete you just leave uh, what well, I think the green channel and delete the rest of them and you get the sort of uh, you set it to overlay and then you have some uh, lighting I also used the normal map and I just deleted some channels, uh, did some uh, huge saturation, adjusting to get some kind of, some interesting uh, maps and I got some nice details out of it. And I'm just uh, doing a, a layer with uh, set to hard light and just uh, painting in the colors right now. So this is pretty much zero texturing so far. You could do this with just with a mouse or just to fill the layers. Starting to add some color variation, at least for the bow, for the bow, I mean. And I'm using Marmoset Marmoset tool bag to preview my model. And now I'm painting a glass map. I have it set to 75% so that I can actually see what I'm painting. And the glass map is just black and white. The the darker it is, the the less glossy it is, and the lighter it is, the the more glossy it is. Trying out some lighting. Lighting is really important. If you have bad lighting, you can, your model will look bad. I'll be I'll be starting to do some more more detailed painting. Still on the color layer that set the hard light. Just painting in some sort of ambient occlusion with a different color. It's important to shift hues. Something like you can do is uh, the, the lighter the color, the, the less saturated it is. And the darker your color, the, the more saturated it is. And uh, the more you use, the more the darker the color that you are using, the more you can like shift the hue of it. So, so like if you have a purple, red, purple, uh, a normal color, if then uh, the shadow can be more bluish and uh, the lighter colors, the highlights can be yellowish. Now I'm just. Turning on the uh, lighting or shading or whatever is whatever it is in uh, in 3D code, so I can see the normal map and I know where to paint some highlights. And this is all. This it's pretty simple. It's just basically following the bakes that you did from the sculpt. There's zero think thinking. Here I'm just adding highlights as well. Again, zero thinking. It's very simple. That's why you, you 
even if you don't plan on using a normal map, you can still do a sculpt and bake out those maps. It does a lot of work for you. It does like 60% of the texture if you do a proper bakes. Okay, adding some color variation to the wood. Again, highlights on the second sharpened area on the wood. I don't know, I don't think wood actually looks like that, but here I'm just adding them. I used, this is why I used the, the map that I made from the normal map to get some interesting, I set it I think to overlay and I got some interesting sort of edges and at that point I was going over those edges with a highlight to get some interesting detail. Here I'm just doing some some painting, making the transition where the wood meets the sharpened areas. I don't think it actually looks like that, but it did work out. What's good enough? Adding some highlights really soft because it's cloth checking it out in Marmoset to see how it actually looks without the lighting and I'm adding some specular maps specular map right now though I'm still here using the same it's the same diffuse used uh, as the specular and that can sometimes actually like be enough. Changing the skylight, find something more interesting. I wanted to get a nice uh, backlight color. The, the metal piece, the big one, just adding some uh, highlights on the edges. And the colors kind of get weird in the dark parts because of its it's still just a color layer on top of all of these uh, different uh, baked maps so it's kind of weird like you can see in the dark areas the color actually becomes sort of orange instead of yellow all the big maps and the, the two bones are actually have separate or well, they are on UV and wrap separately but I still mostly painted them with uh, symmetry on and just turned it off for those sort of scratches or cuts adding some highlights to them
Now I'm doing the metal area, the blue one, also adding some highlights. Adding this sort of metal shine. Kind of, it felt uh, too simple, so I did these kind of, again, I don't know, highlights. But uh, I think I ended up painting it all out because it was a bit too much. I'm adding some extra AO, a bit of blue as well, just so that it doesn't, I don't know how to explain it, it just it, so it looks better next to the blue metal. Now I'm sort of doing the next detail pass. Doing the, the wrappings are orange and there's a lot of blue, so I'm also using the stark blue for the, the ambient occlusion. So it all just comes together as one. Detailing this, this wrapping for the string. This kind of this part was kind of weird. I don't know if it does if it looks okay. I think I could have done it a bit better. The way I painted in the lighting was kind of weird. Again, checking it in my Mr. Tool bag. I'm trying out some stuff with the specular map. Mostly just check. The, I mean. Uh, testing stuff. I'm checking the lighting I think. I think I wasn't really satisfied with it. At this point I was I was kind of starting to run out of things. I didn't really know what to paint anymore. But I just decided to go keep on going. Painting in some ambient occlusion. stuck if you don't know what to do anymore just start painting in some ambient occlusion with a nice color and you'll start seeing other things to fix and edit adding some sort of it's like lighting I don't know, I do this for all weapons. You just darken the sides of it and then line in the, the middle. Again, painting some admin occlusion. And you can see how I'm using different colors. I'm not just using a dark orange, I'm using a purple to get some more color variation to make it look nice. Just 
next again didn't know what to do started looking at it taking breaks and then I decided to make a color that layer which is always a good idea it's really fun to just paint with that layer especially for metal The wrappings ended up looking sort of like silk, which I don't know if... I wasn't sure what I was going for. But that's what happens when you use a color dodge there. Everything turns out looking shiny. And here I'm going over the edges with that layer, with a white color. Uh, for metal it actually works really nicely And highlights just painting in some lines, strokes to get more variation and see if I come up with something interesting. going over the highlights because I didn't actually know what to paint at this point. I kind of wanted to add more details in the sharpened areas, I wanted them to look really nice but I kind of, I don't know I didn't want to spend a, a lot of time on the bow I didn't want the time lapse to be really long so I just went over it really quick and the whole piece, at least the time lapse in its normal time normal speed it's actually I th about 5 hours but with the baking it's about 6 to 7 here I'm doing the specular map the specular map ended up being pretty much the same diffuse map but a bit darker yeah I was changing the, the colors a bit So it wasn't working here because as you can see I'm getting this sort of green reflection which I didn't want that. I wanted a, a really shiny yellow metal. So I, I didn't know how to get that so I stopped recording and actually I looked at some examples and then continued so the, what I had to do was make the yellow uh, much darker and the diffuse and then much darker and more orange and then for the specular I had to make it uh, lighter and uh, more yellow
I think I'll be making a token now. Yeah, token. Just doing the multiply layer and the dealing with hundred percent opacity. Hundred percent opacity on the brush. On the layer, it was 15 because people were messaging me and I don't want that to happen while I'm recording. So yeah, I darkened the yellow part. But I think I also later uh, made the blue part less saturated, but I'm not sure. I think I did that in the specular. And you can see it still wasn't working and I was starting to get scared so but then I decided to try some things with lighting and that really helped and fixed everything. I'm trying to move the boat to see if how it looks when I have a more interesting more interesting uh, angle. See, I'm getting this really nice reflection on the yellow parts, but the blue it didn't. It wasn't the main focus. I was re I really wanted to to nail the yellow parts to make it really nice. The blue was just like a filler. I didn't really care about it. Yeah, darkened the specular because it was it was too bright. over those small highlights and I'm adding some more color variation just throwing in some reds you can't really see it but I think it still helps pieces because it, it's fantastic for that. Made the string, the wrapping make a bit more sense. Let's 
kind of small problem with when you actually bake all your textures and use mo well mostly use the uh, bakes because you feel like you didn't do anything normal. I mean, it, it feels like you didn't do any painting, any texturing. And you start feeling bad because you didn't do anything. You just end up feeling like you, you were painting uh, dark lines and highlights the whole time. And this was, I think, the final diffuse. I'm going to be doing a bit more editing on the glass map. Yeah, like I said, desaturated the blue on the specular. It didn't make that much of a difference, but I think, still think it, it did help a little bit. Yeah, now I'm doing some uh, more details on the glass map, which was kind of a waste of time because I don't think it actually changed anything. I'm using one of the default brushes to just add little pieces of darker or lighter colors. Sure, I should have increased like the contrast of that to, to actually be able to see it, to see a difference on the final model. And here, yeah, just uh, I added the uh, ambient occlusion over the closeness. I don't think it actually. Well, maybe it didn't help. Trying some different brushes to and some different variances. Changing the size just because uh, I wanted to, it to actually be visible or noticeable, and for that it had to be uh, like big enough. But I think I ended up making the details in the glass map a bit too small, and you can see it barely changes anything. I don't think it's even noticeable in the video.
I'm just seeing if I need to change something. And you can see, no, yeah, this this was darkened. I don't know. Did I? I don't know if I darkened the the diffuse at the end. I think I only made it dark for the specular. Just adding some small final details. Exporting the final textures. Having some small color balance, and I think I sharpened as well. Yeah. Made a material with the final textures and put that in. I'm doing some adding some post effects like sharpen. I added also a little bit of bloom. Or was it there? I can't remember. I tried adding some depth of field, but it it doesn't work really well on the bow. Yeah, the, these are the final images. I I know the time lapse ended up being a bit too quick, too fast, but I hope I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, thanks for watching.